Okay, today's lesson, section 3.4, graphs and transformations. First off, let's talk about parent functions. The basic, most basic of all the types of functions, like if you had a uh, y equals 1, or keep in mind, anytime you have f of x equals, that's the same thing as y equals. y equals 1, the most basic type of that type of function is, it's a straight line, it's a horizontal line. And of course, we could do other things. We could have y equals 2, y equals 3. All of them would be horizontal lines. Next one, that's the uh, greatest integer function that we talked about, or your um, rounding down, and we remember what it looked like. Somebody asked what it would look like on the calculator. There it is. So you can graph it. It's that stales. The Yeah, you can't hardly see. They're, they're, and the calculator can't do that. There would be a hole here, and a hole here, and a hole here. Um, if y'all don't, if y'all want to just watch this first time through, this this part I wouldn't copy down about the parent functions. You'll you'll see them enough to where you'll be all right. Y equals x. That's your most basic line that you can have. Y equals x looks like uh, it's got you a 45 degree angle there. Y equals absolute value of x. What does that look like? It's somewhat parabolic. It's a v. Let's talk about y. Take that y equals x. If you take the absolute value of it, everything that's negative, it makes positive. So it flips that up and you've got a v shape. x squared is a parabola. So there's some of your most there's some of your parent functions. Let's finish the rest of them. Uh, x to the third looks like that. 1 over x is what's called a hyperbola. Square root of x, don't worry about it. I can come back and I'll let you write down if you need to. Square root of x is a sideways parabola, but how come it doesn't have the bottom part of it? Because you, what if I did plus and minus the square root of x? Then you would have the bottom part. Okay, anytime you take the square root of something and y'all are kind of right, but not 100%. When you take the square root of something, it's always positive in this case. So that's the reason it's just uh, above the x-axis. If you had plus and minus the square root, then you would have the rest of that parabola down there. That's the negative part. And then finally, the cube root of x is uh, actually the inverse of x to the third up here. And it's just that same graph on the side. Uh-huh. That's what we're fixing to talk about is flips and all that stuff. Vertical shifts. If we wanted to shift a, shift a graph vertically, again, we're talking up and down shifts. Look what happens here. If we add or subtract something to the end, notice it's not attached to the x. It's attached to the entire function. f of x equals x squared plus 2. It takes that same graph moves it up to. Absolute value of x, if you attach a minus 2, what do you think that's going to do? Moves it down to. The same graph down to. And 1 over x, if you do plus 3, it's going to take the same graph, move it up 3. Those are your vertical shifts. Horizontal shifts, look where you've got to add and, sub add, and, add and subtract things in order to make it shift horizontally. It's attached to just the x. And it does opposite to what you would think it would do. If you have an x minus 2, it actually moves it to the right two spots. So if it's attached to the x, we keep in mind that it's always doing opposite of what we think it would do. Notice you've got attached to the x. It's not added to the end of it. It's not added to the whole function, but it's added just to the x. We have a plus 2. What's that going to do? Moves it to the left two spots. And then finally, down there on the bottom with the x, we have a minus 1. That's going to move it to the right 1. Next up, vertical reflections. And again, vertical, we're talking up and down. Anytime... Anytime the transformation's happening up and down, it's going to be applied to the entire function, not just the x. If it's applied just to the x, that's your horizontal stuff. So vertical reflection, if you have a negative in front of the whole function, that's not, you don't have a parentheses around uh, the negative x. It's, it's in front of the x squared. That's going to flip it across the x-axis. It's going to flip it up and down. Negative x squared. If it was in parentheses with the x, it'd flip it left and right. But since it's out front, in front of the whole x squared, it flips it up and down. Like here, um, if I wanted to flip it up and down, where's that negative going to be? Is it, it's going to be, and read for me, it's going to be f of x equals 
negative absolute value of x, which is going to flip it down across that x-axis. And then same way here, is it going to be inside with the x or out front? Out front, negative absolute, or excuse me, negative cube root of x flips it up and down. What was down is now up. What was up is now down. Cube root, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, can see, I see you squint. But yeah, you got the square root with a 3 index. Horizontal reflections. If we want to flip something horizontally, which means across the y-axis, left and right, we put the negative inside with the x. It's attached to the x instead of being out front. So therefore, that's going to flip it left and right. Here you would have, well, let's think about the second one. We're going to attach the negative to the x, but is that not the same thing as doing negative 1 over x? So if you flip this left and right, isn't it the same? would you not get the same graph as flipping it up and down? Does that make sense? So you could think of this actually as a horizontal or a vertical reflection. Because either way, you're going to get that. But technically, since the negative's on the x, we flipped it uh, horizontal. And then finally, you've got the step function or the uh, greatest integer function or the well, what was other floor function, whatever you want to call it. Uh, now, this is floor. Yeah. So the negative's inside with the x, so we're flipping it across the y-axis, horizontal. Y'all remember this from last year? Pretty easy. Stretches and compressions. Start out with f of x. This is where, how do you stretch or compress it? Let's see if you remember that. If you multiply or, well, really multiply or divide, but we're thinking of division as multiplying by a fraction. So instead of, division by two is the same thing as multiplying by half. All depends on whether it's vertical or horizontal. If it's, if it's the horizontal one, we'll do that one next. But vertical, it does what you think it would do. If you have y equals x squared, if you multiply that by 3, we're talking vertical now. We're not, the 3 is not just attached to the x. You can't put a parentheses around 3x there. Does that make sense? 3 is attached to x squared. So what's, what's that going to do? It's going to stretch it vertically times how much? Times 3. It's going to make it 3 times as tall. So what used to be at 1, 1, you can take that point that was at 1, 1 is now at 1, where? What, 1, 3. 1, 1 is now at 1, 3. It made it three times as tall. Okay? If it was at 2, 4, it's now at 2, 12. Three times as tall. Makes sense? If we want to make it uh, shorter, more, com more compressed, we can do something like 1 third. A fraction. Something between 0 and 1 is going to compress it. So uh, what was at 1, 1 is now at 1, 1 third. It's, it's 1 third as tall. It compressed it. The, the bigger the number, in this case, with the parabola, the skinnier it would get. Now, it all depends on what shape you have because it's going to be a little bit different on this next one. Because the square root of x, if you multiply by it, it by 2, it's going to be twice as tall. Okay, So you're going to have y equals 2 squared of x. It kind of makes it bigger since it's the way it's shaped. If you multiply it by a fraction, by like one half, it's going to compress it. Again, stretches are numbers bigger than one. Compressions are numbers smaller than one. So if you multiply by a half, it's going to compress it by one half. It's going to make it shorter. Vertical stretches make it taller. Vertical compressions make them shorter. And they're what? That's, that's when it's not attached to the X. Yes, that's when it's, tag, it's tacked onto the front of the whole thing. Now, what about horizontal? That's when they're attached to the X. And you can see Y equals X squared. Notice the one-third is just on the X now. So we've got one-third X all squared. These do opposite of what you think it would do. That's the ones that Cody were talking, was talking about. Instead of compressing it by a third, you have to flip it. <laughs> well, take a third and flip it, what do you get? Three. It's going to stretch it by three. Horizontally, not vertically. Take that same problem, though. See if you remember your rules for exponents. Uh, could we square both of those inside there? One third x, all squared. Could you square each piece? Yeah. And get one ninth x squared. Then it would be an actual uh, vertical compression instead of a horizontal stretch which is going to be the same thing. 
it's going to end up in the same spot. Next one, y equals in parentheses 3x all squared. Since the 3 is attached to the x, it's going to be a horizontal uh, flip it. Flip 3, what do you get? One third, so it's going to be a compression. Always, always remember to flip it. Always remember it's, it's going to do opposite when it's attached to the x. So flip three, we do get a third. That we're gonna, that's going to compress it horizontally by one third. Pushes it in. Any questions? Square root of x. We have a one half there. What's that going to do? Stretch or compress? Times what? Two. We got to flip it. Stretch it horizontally times two. What used to be at one one is now pulled out here to two one. You see that? That point was pulled out. Uh, square root of two x. Stretch or compress? Compress by a half horizontally. There you go. It pushes it in. Combining them. That's all the transformations that you have to know. Now let's just put them all together. Uh, when you combine them, you're going to get some sort of function that looks like this. Okay, to where you've got. Um, make sure. Here's here's the biggest thing to remember. Whatever's in there with the x. Factor out what's in front of the x, or you're going to get the wrong answer. Here's the um, the order that it does things in. All the horizontal stuff comes first. It first reflects the hor ref reflects horizontally, stretches or compresses horizontally, and then translates horizontally. When it when we get it in this form, so all the horizontal cut stuff comes first. Reflect, stretch, compress, translate. Then the vertical stuff happens with the same order. Reflect, stretch or compress, translate. I can't pause. I'll go back if y'all need to write that down. Let me, let me just come back at the end of and translate. Yeah, horizontal first and then vertical. Look at this one. And I'll show you what. Well, let's, let's talk about Notice this. This is what I was discussing a while ago. <laughs> the stuff that's in here with your x, you have a negative 3 and a minus 5. That negative 3 has been uh, factored out, but it is still inside there with the x. Here's your what's called your parent function. That's a parabola. Uh, inside with the x, you have, again, you have a minus 5 and you have a negative 3 being multiplied by it. All that stuff squared. Then outside, you have a negative 2 and a plus 4. Okay, all your horizontal stuff happens first. So what we're going to do... It says focus on the x first. So the negative 3 and negative 5 works first. The negative before the parentheses reflects the graph. That's the first thing that happens. You have a minus in there or a negative being multiplied, like a negative x, so it's going to reflect it first. The 3 does the opposite. Instead of stretching it, it's going to compress horizontally by one third. You've got to flip it. The minus 5 moves it right. Does the opposite. Instead of left 5, moves it right 5. Then we look at the y stuff. The negative in front flips it vertically. The 2 stretches it vertically by a factor of 2, and the plus 4 shifts it up 4. That's as ugly as one can get. That's all the transformations right there. All six of them are happening to that one problem. So that's as bad as it can look. Let's That's that's a really good that's a really good question because I have no idea what the answer is. How do, how would you know that's not the floor function? That's the reason I like that's the reason I like the little floor. If I if I put it on your test, it won't be brackets. It'll be the little L's but in backwards L. So here's the steps it would go in. X squared. Then we said the negative's going to flip it. But do you notice when you flip that, it doesn't move. Why? x squared and negative x squared. If you square a negative, it's going to be a positive. Anyway, that's the same thing. Negative x, parentheses, squared is the same thing because square each piece, you get the same, same answer. The 3 is going to stretch it vertically. Stretch it vertically, that's right. No, 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 no. It's backwards, I'm sorry. Since it's inside with the x, it's going to compress it horizontally by a factor of one third. That's what happened there. The minus 5 moved it right 5. The negative out front flipped it across the x-axis, flipped it vertically. The 2 stretched it even further vertically, made it even skinnier, 
We stretched it vertically by a factor of two, and the four moves it up four. That's all the different transformations. So you went from x squared to this. Let's do one more of those. Uh, I'm going to skip through. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to look at them. Square root of x. What's the first thing that these transformations do? We got to look for reflections first. We look for stretches, compressions second. We look for transformations or translations third. So look at this one. What's the first thing that happens? The negative inside is going to flip it which way? Horizontally because it's with the x. What happens next? Because of the one fifth, you got to flip it because it's with the x, so it's going to be a five. It's going to stretch it horizontally by five. Good job. And the last thing that happens? The plus one moves it left one. Good job. Now let's talk about the stuff outside the square root. What happens next? Because the negative, it flips it vertically. Good job. Vertically or horizontally? Vertical. Oh, this is vertical, right? Stretches four and then moves it down two. Good job. Here's all the different steps that you just told me. There's a square root of x. There it is flipped horizontally. There it is stretched by a factor of five horizontally. And there it is moved left one. Then we're going to flip it vertically. Then we're going to stretch it by a factor of four vertically. And then we're going to move it down to, there's your graph. Do you see how your domain would change from the beginning to this? The domain here, well, look at it. You tell me what the domain would be. Can x be negative 1? Negative infinity up to negative 1. There's your domain. Because can x be 0? No. Because when x is 0, you don't have a graph there. Could x be 1, 2, 3? No. You don't have a graph anywhere over there. Your graph starts at negative 1. Can x be, look at your function up here. Can x be negative 1? Negative 1 plus 1, 0. 1 fifth times 0, 0. Negative 0, still 0. Can you take the square root of 0? Yeah. So you, you can start at negative 1. That's no problem. If, you, if I ask you to find the domain, you'd set that stuff underneath equal to zero and solve.